Hello everyone and welcome back to Clinical Cousins YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to go over the rhythms known as A, flutter and atrial fibrillation. So first we're going to look at atrial flutter. So atrial flutter occurs when there are hundreds of pacemaker cells firing all at the same time. This results in an extremely fast atrial rate. The atrial rate is typically around 300 beats per minute and the ventricular rate is usually about half that at around 150 beats per minute. So we should be wondering why is the atrial rate twice as fast as the ventricular rate? And this is actually a good thing because if the ventricular rate were the same as the atrial rate, the ventricles would not have enough time to fill up with blood and they would not be an effective pump. So it is actually a good thing that the ventricular rate is lower and this is due to our good friend the AV node. So remember that the AV node halts or at least stalls some of the electrical activity from the atria. So we have to remember that the AV node prevents all of these extremely fast electrical impulses from the atria from being transmitted into the ventricles. However, a flutter is not a rhythm that we want to be in all the time because our patient can deteriorate rather quickly. So what do we know about this rhythm? The first thing that strikes us are the really sharp P waves. In fact, if I were to take away these QRS complexes, they would look almost like a series of Fs that are all strung together. And this is why the atrial flutter P waves are actually called F waves. So remember that the F in atrial flutter stands for F waves. Now, we must know that the atrial rate for this rhythm is around 300, and remember we're talking about beats per minute, and the ventricular rate is around 150. The rhythm is usually regular and predictable, meaning that for however many F waves we have, we know that we're gonna get a QRS complex right after that. The P waves have a sawtooth appearance, or F appearance. The PR interval is it's likely gonna be short, but it's still within that range of 0 0.12 to 0 0.20 seconds. Uh, there can be a variable ratio for the P to QRS, or in this case, the F to QRS, uh, because there can be uh, one to every uh, QRS, or three to every QRS, or four to every QRS complex. It just depends. The QRS complex is still going to be uh, between 0 0.06 and 0 0.11 seconds, and there's gonna be no groups and no drops. So the important thing to remember with A flutter is that it has sawtooth F waves and the atrial rate is often twice the ventricular rate. Lastly, please note that we can have what is called A flutter with variable ventricular response. All this means is that we have such a fast atrial rate that the ventricular activation is highly variable and unpredictable. So if all of these QRS complexes are predictable, the only thing with uh, atrial flutter with variable ventricular response is that it looks more irregular. Now, we're gonna talk about atrial fibrillation or AFib. If there were 300 pacemakers in A flutter, there are thousands in AFib. AFib is characterized by chaotic and uncoordinated electrical activity in the atria. Basically, there are no clear atrial pacemakers. So. The rate can be either a fast or a slow ventricular rate, and the rhythm is often irregular, meaning that it is unpredictable. There are no discernible P waves. It just looks like static. There's no PR interval. There's no P to QRS ratio because we don't have any P waves. And the QRS complex is generally normal at around 0.06 to 0.11 seconds, and there are no groups and no drop complexes. So the thing to pay attention to with AFib is that it is chaotic atrial activity that will look like static on our EKG or rhythm. So before normal ventricular activation, you're not gonna have any discernible P waves. Also, people with AFib have no clear mechanical contraction of the atria. This basically turns the atria into a petri dish for blood clots. So instead of having blood move through the heart in a linear fashion, People with AFib have just a jumbled mix of activity which can form and push clots into your lungs, into your heart, and into your brain. 
So be sure to monitor your patients because they will likely be on an anticoagulant medication such as warfarin or Coumadin to prevent pulmonary embolisms, to prevent myocardial infarctions, to prevent transient ischemic attacks, and to prevent CVAs or strokes. Why? Because they are likely to throw a clot with all of this chaotic atrial activity. As always, thank you for taking the time to learn with us today, and remember to like and subscribe for more content.